Buyer's Guide is brought to you by Change Cars. Thank you for tuning in to Buyer's Guide. Hannes would like some clarity on how manufacturers calculate the power and torque figures on hybrid vehicles, as he's read some very confusing reports in the motoring media, especially relating to the recently launched Toyota Corolla Cross Hybrid. One report states that the petrol engine delivers 72 kilowatts and the electric motor 53 kilowatts. The combined output is given as 90 kilowatts. Hmm, it is confusing. Then they state the difference between the 125 kilowatts and the 90 kilowatts is due to the CBT losses, but surely the transmission can't sap 28% of power? Michael? I'm not the expert on this, so I did the right thing. I yeah. went to Wikipedia found out exactly what the story is. I think the big mistake that a lot of people make is they take the two maximum outputs and they combine and them. Mm -hmm. They think that is the maximum uh, output at any given time. It's not. The maximum output of that vehicle at any given time, irrespective of which is operating at a maximum, the way I understand it is 90 kilowatts. It will never be more than that. So it's not a case of that car's got 125 kilowatts. Independently, the figures quoted, the 73 and the 52, is what they will develop when working alone. Individually on Correct. When working in tandem, maximum 90. Yeah. And I hope I'm right. If not, uh, well, it's, <laughs> if not it's <laughs> Wikipedia's fault, not my fault. It is confusing because it's something that you do. You know, I look at these figures. I remember going on the Corolla Cross and, and they were talking about this on the launch and saying, but I'm adding up. I'm saying it's one, you know, 125 plus 50. It's 100. Oh, this thing's going to be powerful. Yeah. But it's actually, you do get a certain amount of loss through the gearbox. You must remember, through everything, there is power loss. Even on the altitude, you're getting roughly a 15% uh, loss in power because of the altitude. And How are they actually work it out? In the engine. There's a lot of loss due to friction. Mm -hmm. And that's where you can attribute that loss to. But on a motor vehicle, you know where you can just take, like, Michael correctly pointed out. 75 and 25, that's 100. Yeah, no, not at all. there's too many other factors involved there. Yes. You know, if you putting them, uh, two engines in series or whatever, and then uh, making sure that they both run optimally all the time, maybe you'll just get close to the 125 numbers. But believe you me, there's so much of yeah. losses and friction yeah. that you get because of internal combustion engines. Yeah there's no way you're going to get. I think you also must power. remember on a hybrid vehicle that the, the electric motor isn't really working when you're doing 120 on the highway. Correct. Correct. It's only, it works in the sort of traffic environment. Yeah. So your petrol engine switches off and then the little electric motor just helps you going along. And that's for efficiency and for, you know, not, not, not being polluting. So when you floor it, then you're going to get the petrol engine coming in. And, and in some stages... You're almost you overriding it. Yes, it's almost yeah. overriding. And in some, in some instances, you can have 90. both the electric and the, the petrol engine working together. But it's designed more for efficiency as for power. So, you know, if you're worried about the, the figures of it, don't. Just go and drive the car. Does this power... Does, does it suit you? Uh, yes, it does. Then buy the car and drive it like that. But it is quite confusing because you do... You know, common sense says... Like Segi says, 75 and 25 is 100. So why is it not 100? Because you do get friction losses. You do get loss through the gearbox. Uh, it's like anything. It's, that engine's pushing out so much, but when it hits the road, it's a lot less. But 90 kilowatts is a lot of power. Yes. 90 kilowatts. Not, the f original Golf GTI, 1800, same size engine. What kilowatts did it have? It was like 82. 80, or something 80 something. Spot 85, on. 82. Yeah. 82. But yeah. I've driven the, the hybrid and I have driven the normally aspirated car and they feel very, very similar. It's not a matter of getting extra power, it's a matter of being more efficient. efficient. Where the Corolla Cross in the normal 1.8 does something like, if I remember correctly, it was like 8 litres, 100. And it's like half that because of the hybrid, hybrid vehicle. Because a lot of the times you're using the electric engine. Depends on how you drive it. If you drive in the traffic, it's more efficient. And that's what it's designed for. It's not a race car. And the way petrol prices SUV. are going up. Oh, yeah. I think that's what you wanted to be driving. Yeah. So you want to, uh, if you're going to buy a Corolla Cross, go and buy the hybrid because the savings that you're going to have in terms of the fuel consumption will, will pay, very decent. pay, pay yeah. it off very, very quickly. You've got a big saving every month. And remember, if you're thinking of selling your current vehicle, be sure to visit changecars.co.za and use the sell your vehicle function to get the best offer for your pride and joy.
Buyer's Guide was brought to you by Change Cars, the only platform in South Africa that works exclusively with manufacturer-backed dealerships. Change Cars. There's no safer online vehicle platform in South Africa.